Classic Tales, Arabian Nights, The Porter and the Three Ladies of Baghdad. Once upon a time, there was an unmarried porter in Baghdad. One day, while he stood idly on the street with his crate, a graceful, tall, and beautiful lady approached him and asked for his service. He happily accepted the job. The lady bought wines, fruit and flowers, butchered goods, groceries, and pottery, prompting the porter to exclaim that he should have brought a horse or camel if he had known she would buy so much. The lady laughed, but they continued to buy scents and spices until they arrived at a magnificent palace where she knocked gently. The door was opened by another very beautiful lady, dazzling the porter. They let the porter in with the goods, entering a large and luxurious court, where the porter saw a third lady even more beautiful than the other two. Realizing she was the eldest due to the respect shown by the other two, he felt a sense of awe. They paid the porter two gold coins, but he still did not leave. The eldest lady asked if the money was insufficient, but the porter replied that they had paid him more than enough. He was so astonished by their beauty, and seeing no men around, he surmised that they might be bored without male company. Amused, the ladies allowed him to stay. They set the wine at the table, drinking and making merry. After some time spent drinking, singing, and reciting verses, the porter became quite drunk, and the sun began to set. The ladies suggested he return home, but the porter, now very happy and inebriated, admitted he could not find his way back and asked if he could stay until morning. The youngest lady vouched for him, recounting how he had kindly accompanied her shopping and carried their goods. The eldest agreed to let him stay, provided he read and abided by the writing on the door, which stated, you shouldn't ask things that don't concern you, unless you want to hear things that you don't like. The porter agreed, and they prepared for dinner. Then there was a knock at the door. One of the ladies went out to see who it was. She found three Persian calendar and reported to her sister. They had just arrived in Baghdad, and night had fallen, leaving them unsure where to go. They asked for permission to stay until morning. All three were clean-shaven, even their eyebrows, and they were all blind in their right eye. The lady noted they seemed pleasant and looked amusing, so it might be nice to let them stay. The eldest agreed, provided they read and abided by the writing on the door. The three Kalandar entered and thanked them, taking seats to have dinner. After they ate, the Kalandar offered to play music if there were any instruments in the house. The ladies brought out two flutes and a tambourine, and the calendar played music and sang. Another knock came at the door. This time, it was the caliph who had left the palace in disguise with his vizier and bodyguard. Hearing the sound of music from the mansion, he became curious and wanted to enter. Pretending to be a merchant from another town who couldn't find his way back to his lodging and asked for shelter until morning. Again, they were granted permission, provided they read and abided by the writing on the door. The caliph, vizier, and bodyguard entered and joined the drinking and eating. The caliph was curious about the three calendar who had all lost their right eye, but remembered the writing and refrained from asking. As the night went on, the eldest lady reminded her sisters that they must perform their duties. They cleaned the table and asked the three calendar to sit on one side of the room, while the caliph and his entourage sat on the other, with the porter helping them. From a closet, one of the ladies brought out two chained black dogs to the middle of the room. The eldest lady told the porter to bring her the first dog, then whipped the dog until tears fell from its eyes. She then began to cry herself, wiping the dog's tears and holding it. She repeated this with the second dog. After that, the second lady fetched a lute and played it until she was tired. 
The third lady took the flute from her and continued to play until she was gasping for breath and tearing her dress, revealing a neck full of scars. The men in the room exchanged puzzled looks. The caliph, unable to contain his curiosity, asked the three calendar, but they responded that they had only arrived an hour before and knew nothing. The porter also knew nothing. After some discussion, they decided they must ask what was happening. The vizier reminded them about the writing, but they insisted, so it fell upon the porter to ask the ladies. The porter spoke, saying that after discussion, he had become their spokesperson and asked why the eldest lady needed to beat the dogs and cry afterward, and why her sister was covered in scars. The eldest lady became angry because they had broken their promise not to ask questions, despite her kindness in letting them stay. She clapped her hands three times, summoning seven strong guards, each armed with a saber. Surrounded and thinking it was their end, the porter began to cry comically, saying he was being punished for others' mistakes. Amused by his antics, the eldest lady softened and asked everyone to reveal who they truly were and why they had come. The porter explained that he had simply been waiting on the street when one of the ladies approached him for work, leading him to the mansion. The lady then turned to the three calendar and asked if they were brothers, given that they were all blind in the right eye. They replied that they were not brothers, but all sons of kings. The first calendar began to tell his story, 